Good morning. My name is Diane LeBlanc, and I'm the Regional Administrator for the National Archives Northeast Region. Um, I have the pleasure of welcoming each of you this morning. Uh, we are all so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day uh, to be with us um, for this very important public meeting, uh, the first of two that will take place today. Um, and this day is really about hearing from you, so we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on introductions, but I want to briefly, um, this is the boss, Tom Mills, Assistant Archivist of the United States, works directly for the Archivist of the United States, David Ferriero, the Assistant Regional Administrator, David Powers, the Director of Archivo Operations, Nancy Shader, and our Public Program Specialist, Dorothy Doherty. Now, if the rest of the staff that is here could also stand, I would like to recognize you. Out at the front desk, a woman who needs no introduction to most of you, Joni Young, and uh, also with her, Elizabeth Pope. We have Greg Plungey, Carol Savo, Christopher Zarr, Jennifer Nelson, Sarah Pasquarello, and who am I? <laughs> there you go, there you go. Who's that? Patrick Conley, Patrick Conley, and also, um, joining us today, and we are very grateful for, for her being here, is the regional administrator uh, in the Mid-Atlantic region, V. Chapman Smith. Um, again, thank you very much for coming. Just a little bit more about Tom Mills, who I'm going to turn this program over to. Uh, he has uh, been with the National Archives. Let's see, I should know this. For how many years? Ten, Ten years, there you go. Nine of it, he has been in his current position. He spent one year as the regional administrator in the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, prior to that, he was 21 years at the New York State Archives. And he is also um, a native New Yorker from Long Island. So again, I'm turning the program over to Tom Mills. Thank you, Diane. Good morning, everybody. Those of you standing in the back, if you don't want to stand any longer, there are plenty of seats up front because, of course, nobody wants to sit up front. <laughs> but you're more than welcome to, to come up here, or there's a few over on the side there if you're, if you're so inclined. Um, I, I want, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming this morning. Um, we are, as, as you know, uh, in the relatively early stages of planning for a move of the National Archives at New York City from our Barrack Street location to the Customs House, where we are today. And we want to make sure, as we now begin the detailed planning for how this new space is gonna operate, that we have feedback from the people who are our primary customers and other stakeholders. That would be you. Um, we're putting information on our internet site. We're holding uh, meetings with uh, our volunteers. We're talking individually um, as there are requests. For those of you who would like more information about what our plans are. And this public meeting and another one that we'll hold tonight uh, at 5.30 so that in case there are people who are working today and couldn't make it to this meeting, have an opportunity to also come and express their questions, concerns, um, or simply find out information about what we're doing. We believe, hey, Art, how are you? We believe this is a great opportunity for the National Archives uh, to move to the Customs House, and you will hear more about that from uh, our staff, so I'm not gonna go into those kind of details. Um, let me uh, uh, say just a <clears throat> couple of words, a little more than uh, Diane said about uh, myself. She mentioned that I'm, I'm from New York. I did grow up in Long Island. I worked in uh, Brooklyn, in New York City, uh, upstate in Albany. Uh, I know quite a few of you from uh, having worked uh, in New York. Um, I especially uh, uh, 
remember fondly working with Roger Jocelyn <coughs> uh, as we, I'm trying to think of an appropriate term, um, consulted with the <laughs> New York State Department of Health on uh, increasing access to uh, vital records in New York State. That's probably something that's still going on, Roger, and we probably know something about that too, having worked uh, as head of the New York State Archives. So um, I know a little bit um, about the resources that are used in New York State, but as they say, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. So I need to be uh, careful, and I'm going to be relying on the experts both sitting here and the other staff um, who are in the audience uh, to make sure that to the extent we can, we answer your questions today. Um, if we're unable to give uh, a sufficient and full uh, response or explanation for anything you're looking for, um, we will make sure that we capture the information um, and ultimately get back to you as a group or individuals, and of course by posting more information on our website. The way, one of the ways that we're capturing the information um, is through the work of Marie in the back of the room, um, who is videotaping uh, the proceedings. Um, so given that, in order to capture all of uh, the information at the meeting, we need to make sure that we use microphones, um, which is why I have this handheld, hand held, and there are microphones up here. So later on, uh, when, when we're finished with kind of the introductory <coughs> remarks, um, Diane will have the microphone. So uh, when you have uh, questions, uh, uh, please wait until the microphone uh, gets to you before you ask the question. Now, I have one request of you all before we start, if you don't mind. Um, I would like, and we would like to know uh, who you are. So to do that, we're going to practice passing around the microphone. <laughs> now, notice, by the way, am I doing this right? You, you hold it. You can even talk closer. Yeah. But if you hold it maybe six inches away, it works good. Yeah, but what should you do? <laughs> all right, speak directly into it. All right, so now we've all had our training session. She changes. Wow, you're running away already, Oscar? <laughs> well, I guess that, you know. Jordan, we're going to start with you. All right. So if you, if you wouldn't mind, just briefly tell us who you are uh, and what your primary relationship <coughs> with the National Archives New York City is, if you wouldn't mind, in a couple of brief sentences. All right. Hi, I'm Jordan Auslander. I am a professional genealogist. My relationship with the archives, adversarial. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, with the, just with certain staff members. Um, just, I mean, became a big fan after the move from Bayonne and uh, find it indispensable, um, a regular part of my um, weekly routine. Well, it's Sniff and Huntington Historical Society and volunteer. I've been coming here since Bayonne. My name is Nadine Andrews. I always like to have, you know, know that it's a public access to the records are available. I have a long history of New York family members and, you know, it's, it's a, we need the resources. We need to have that available to us. Uh, right now I'm in Jersey, but grew up in New York. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Anita King. I'm a volunteer at the National Museum of the American Indian downstairs on the second floor for 15 years and just seeing what you guys are doing. Long, long time New Yorker. Barbara Proctor. I'm also a volunteer. We're at the information desk down on the second floor, and we wanted to see what was going on because I know we're going to get a lot of questions about where you are and who you are. And I live in New York. I'm Marianne DiNapoli. I'm a professional genealogist, and I've been using the re special resources of the National Archives also since it's been in Bayonne. 
Laura Murphy de Grazia. I'm a professional genealogist, currently the president of the Board for Certification of Genealogists. I don't get to the archives as much as I'd like to anymore because of my commitment to <coughs> BCG, but I'm here to, because I'm concerned about the availability of records to researchers. I think that's the, one of the most important missions of the National Archives. Hi, Aileen Smith. I'm president of the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society, and I use this facility for my research on the Negro. My name is Bill Carriker. I'm also a member of the African-American Historical and Genealogical Society, and I'm a consumer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Richard Burbridge, and I'm also a member of the same organization. <laughs> And I found many of my first discoveries on Berry Street. Uh, my name is Doris Burbridge, and I do a lot of research at the National Archives. I'm also a member of the, of the Genealogical Society, and especially um, I do a lot of Caribbean research, which is not available at other locations. Uh, Gail Adler, I am a former New York City teacher, native New Yorker. I am not a professional genealogist. I just love the maze of untangling the web. I've used the resources at the National Archives and very concerned about what you bring down here and what you don't bring down here. It's been, um, not everything's on the computer and Ancestry did make quite a few mistakes. I'm Charles Thompson, and uh, I was in book publishing for many years, and uh, and have been doing this outside research. And uh, I am so glad that uh, the move is only across town and not to <laughs> Pittsfield or <laughs> some other place. And uh, thank you for the in invitation. I'm Wayne Finnegan, and I love New York City. It's in my fingernails. And I believe everything we can keep in New York City is good for New York City. And that's why I'm here. I'm Annette Fernandez. I'm a research assistant at Lori Thompson Consultants. I'm Kathy Michelson, uh, Director of Development for the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society. And NARA is a crucial resource for our members. And I want to be able to inform them of how they can continue to use it. I'm McKeldon Smith. I'm the president of the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society. We have a very close relationship with NARA on many levels, and we have thousands of members who have, <clears throat> I'm sure, all at one time or another been customers. I'm Elliot Colchimiro. Uh, recently, I became a professional volunteer. I like to call myself an archivist, archivist now. And of course, uh, this is the end of my second year at the Barrack Street facility. I've enjoyed it very much. I've been assigned some fascinating projects. And I'm delighted you'll be moving to this location because it's closer to the Staten Island Ferry. And that's <laughs> good for me. I'm Carol Savo. I'm a staff member at the National Archives. And I've been working with the National Archives since 1987. Hi, I'm Greg Plunges. I'm an archivist on the staff of the National Archives in New York City. I've been. Uh, with the archives as long as Carol has. <laughs> I'm Livingston Young. I'm the administrative manager for the US Bankruptcy Court. Um, we're one of the first tenants in the building, so we have a vested interest in <coughs> moving. Um, we have a long standing relationship with the archives, so that is a positive. However, we serve the judges and the public, so security becomes a primary issue in these days, so that's also one of our focus. My name is uh, Scott Merritt. I'm the Director of Operations for National Museum of the American Indian George Gustav High Center here in the building. Um, we, weren't the, we, we were not the first tenant, but soon thereafter, but we are the largest tenant, uh, square footage-wise. Uh, but the, uh, we're very uh, 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 excited about the the uh, National Archives moving into this building. We feel it'll be uh, mutually beneficial to both of our organizations, and we've, we've uh, worked with them a bit over the last couple of years, at least uh, trying to encourage them and, get, and, and make clear the positive aspects about being in what 
uh, you know, in my mind, has been a, a, a sort of a great rebirth of, of downtown New York and just the accessibility of, of this building and what it's become, I think, is a very uh, positive thing. So um, that's why I'm here. I'm Elizabeth Pope. I'm an archivist at the National Archives of New York, and I've been here since December. Uh, I'm Ted Doganek. Uh, I work for the Public Building Service, a, an agency of the General Service Administration, and I'll be the uh, project manager on the design and construction of the National Archives moving into uh, Bowling Green. I'm Sarah Pascarello. I'm an archives technician with the National Archives, and I've been here about six months. Hi, I'm uh, Christopher Zarr. I'm the Education Specialist for the National Archives at New York City, and I've uh, been here about two years. Hi, I'm Charlie Neeson. I'm a volunteer at the Barrick Street New York Archives. Hi, I'm Arlene Jennings, Brooklyn. I'm here more from general than personal interest. I am uh, the Secretary of the National Genealogical Society, and I'm very concerned about uh, access to records and services to our members. Hello, my name is Sarah Fitzpatrick. I am the archivist at the Brooklyn Navy Yard Archive. Uh, we've been working with National Archive on a scanning project of all of the historical photos of the Brooklyn Navy Yard and hope to be able to continue to access those as well as other records that we think might be available. Hi, my name is Meredith Wisner. Um, I'm also at the Brooklyn Navy Yard Archive and I've been conducting much of that research. I'm Don Eckley. I'm a Long Islander, so I'm a New Yorker. Uh, working on a special projects at the National Archives to index all the naturalization records. And we've been doing that for a number of about 13 years, something like that. And we're up to, I don't know, almost 2 million records. And they are all available free on our website. I'm Jennifer Nelson. I'm the Director of Archival Programs in uh, College Park Headquarters National Archives. I work for Tom. I'm Ruth Carr. I'm the uh, head public service librarian at the New York Public Library at 42nd Street. And our relationship to the archives is complimentary, with an E. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Roger Jocelyn. I'm a certified and forensic genealogist. And my, my time with NARA goes back to the mid-70s when I used to uh, play hooky from work in Boston, take my lunch and go out and spend a day in Jim Owens. Uh, cramped office with an old recordac and a limited number of microfilms, but that was, that was wonderful. And I also like to say that Artie Sniffen and I have the uh, unique distinction of being designated by former archivist John Carlin as the worst troublemakers in the genealogical field. I'm Leslie Korn. I'm also a certified and forensic genealogist, and I cut my teeth here at the National Archives as a volunteer, and I'm very grateful for that exposure to the records and to what I learned here. And because of that, I really hate to see any records leave here, and we're all facing reality, obviously. Um, as part of a, a small but rapid and constant uh, customer group, um, we need records for the court, and that is my concern that we will have um, enough of those records still accessible in here. And another concern of mine is about the dumbing down that the internet uh, can provide. And how can the National Archives maintain its stature and its education and its offerings in the face of surname typists? My name is Lucy Atkinson, and I guess I'm an amateur here because I've, I've only been doing genealogy for a few months, working on my family, trying to prove to them that what they're telling us <laughs> may not be true. <laughs> and so <laughs> I hope to uh, use the National Archives a lot in the future. Hi, I'm Mary Jane uh, Cameron. I'm from the Friends of the Cuscop Library. We do genealogy programs for the last eight years. And we've had some of the speakers here <laughs> uh, at our programs. And um, I'm delighted about the location. Um, I think it's wonderful. I think it'll make it much more accessible um, to a lot more people. Uh, again, I, I understand the problem with the records, but I'm, I'm hoping that somebody will have a great uh, way of solving that problem. 
I'm Deborah Braverman. I'm a professional genealogist specializing in forensic work. I'm also a director of the Association of Professional Genealogists. Um, I was actually at Bayonne, <laughs> so it's been a long time that I have a relationship with the National Archives. I'm very concerned um, that we continue to have access to records that we need to have provide to clients and to the courts. Um, I think we tend to forget that not everything is on the internet and even things that are on the internet aren't always complete and correct. Um, so I would like to see, uh, I have a whole list of records in my head that I would like to see remain here. Hi, I'm Estelle Gusick. I've had a long-term relationship with the National Archives and with the New York State Archives. I remember when Tom was up there and very helpful to us. I also remember when we had a little controversy between us on the Brooklyn naturalization <laughs> records. Um, but I am also concerned about the, the, uh, the number of records that, uh, that remain here. I think it's really important to keep more of them here. Uh, this is one of, in my opinion, one of the most important archives in the city and, and possibly in the nation because this is the place that everybody comes to. It's, it's, it, the, there are other wonderful places like the New York Public Library and the Municipal Archives and the Center for Jewish History. But the National Archives is the repository, repository for all the federal records and they are vast and as I'm looking at the list of the things that are not staying here, I'm really concerned. Some of them I didn't even know were here. Some of them were items that were donated by the Jewish Genealogical Society, of which I was a former president, uh, and I would like to see those stay, or at least uh, uh, have the JGS be given the option of determining where they reside, uh, hopefully to stay in New York, because that was the purpose of, uh, of those donations. Uh, and then there are other things that I'm seeing on your list that. Um, I know are not online and, and probably uh, uh, because they're not in the genealogical resource book, most people don't even know that they are here. And, uh, and I would love to see you publish this list online so that people can give you better feedback. You, you'll get it from me for sure. Hi, I'm Avram Geller. I'm a professional genealogist. I have the uh, pleasure of living two short blocks from 201 Varick, but it only took me 10 minutes to get down here by subway. Uh, my, my biggest concern is the access to uh, indexes, which, uh, which NARA uh, currently has at Varick Street, indexes which are in some cases handwritten. In many cases, they're um, uh, microfilmed card indexes that have been digitized, but I often um, find things on them that um, have been incorrectly transcribed in, uh, in when they were digitized and put on, uh, on to uh, Ancestry and so forth. So I, I think the indexes are a uh, very important um, treasure to maintain since they go one generation back from uh, the computerized records. Hi, good morning. My name is Myra Luriano. I'm the manager of the Milstein Division of United States History, Local History, and Genealogy at the New York Public Library. And as my colleague Ruth Carr has said, you know, um, our relationship is definitely complementary, and we refer many of our patrons to, to NARA on a regular basis. Hi, uh, Diane LeBlanc had introduced me. I'm Dee Chapman Smith. Some of you may remember me when I was New York State Archivist. Your faces look very familiar. Um, I had the privilege of serving New York for over six years and also the honor of being designated an honorary New Yorker by the Board of Regents. And I still keep my allegiance and ties to New York in many, many ways, including continuing to support the State Archives and its efforts to help uh, organizations across New York State preserve history. So I'm serving on their um, advisory board and it's my pleasure to be here today and to hear your concerns. I'm Patrick Conley, an archivist with the National Archives in New York and I've been here, this is my third year. I've been with the National Archives 10. I started just after Tom and he was my first boss at the archives. And a good thing that was, right Patrick? <laughs> I, um, people came in late, there's still a couple of chairs up front if you care to sit down. Um, uh, to uh, 
begin um, uh, the, the rest of the meeting, uh, the Dave Powers, Nancy Shader, and Dorothy Darty are going to spend a couple minutes each um, giving an introduction about some of the facts about the move from Barrack Street to the Customs House, which I said is, uh, I think I did, uh, is scheduled for probably more like 18 months out uh, now. So we have plenty of time you know, to have discussions and, and get feedback. Um, one comment I would like to make to start is, yes, the National Archives has two overriding missions. One, to preserve, um, protect, safeguard, preserve the records uh, that are entrusted to our care that tell the history of the federal government, hold the federal government accountable, protect individual rights and responsibilities, and tell the history of our great nation. And preservation of records means nothing if we don't make them accessible. And ultimately, that's what we're all about. That part, I think, is the, the foundation, the building block of all our discussions. So first, um, let me turn it over to Dave Powers, who's the <coughs> Assistant Regional Administrator for the Northeast Region. Great. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, everybody. Thank you again for making yourselves available and taking the time to come down for today's public meeting. You have no idea how thrilled we are to uh, be at this point. Um, some of us, myself included, have been involved in this project for approximately five years at this point in time. In fact, when Nancy Shader first came on, it was one of her first assignments. She'll be happy to tell you a little bit later. But uh, a quick history, uh, GSA came to us in 2005 and talked about relocating our operations from Varick Street to the Custom House. And as a few of you have mentioned this morning, you know, one look and one visit here, and as we all know in any real estate transaction, it's all about location. We fell in love with the place, we walked around, we saw our neighbors, uh, we have existing partnerships already in place at Ellis Island, Battery Park across the street, uh, Federal Hall where we have partnerships, and you know our eyes were opened and we all came in excited at the prospect. But in 2005, there was only space available on the fourth floor here. We're currently sitting obviously on the third floor. And we looked at it every, any number of ways and realized uh, and came to the conclusion that we just could not uh, you know, make the change at that point and have a viable operation the space wasn't sufficient, et cetera, et cetera. But it opened our eyes. Uh, we knew what the rent situation was at Verrick, you know, down the road, and we started our own market survey to see what else was out there uh, throughout Manhattan to relocate our operations. But obviously, this left a lasting impression, and we were always in touch with GSA, some of whom are here today, if anything did come down the pike, you know, we'd be interested in, in certainly taking a second look. Well, as fate would have it, in 2007, shortly after the Custom House was celebrating its 100th anniversary here, uh, GSA came to us with something close to one of those uh, godfather-type offers we've all heard about. And uh, now there was space on the third floor and fourth floor. And in addition, GSA was providing substantial financial incentives for us to consider closely, including significant rent reductions by moving in here and also substantial capital outlay on their part, including a special historic preservation fund that they use for this facility. So needless to say, the phone started ringing at College Park in New York and Boston, and uh, we decided obviously we had to do our due diligence with this process, so we commissioned a feasibility study to see if all of our needs could be met at the Customs House. As Tom said, the, one of the primary goals was to see if they could guarantee that our records could be safe here, they could be protected, preserved, so that not only everybody sitting here but future generations would have access to records that were properly stored um, at this facility. So amongst other things, that came back obviously in a positive way, that they could do that here, something that we cannot do at Verrick Street. So that's a major concern of ours, that we can 
be in compliance with NARA's strict uh, standards for archival storage and that the Customs House will allow us to do that. Now, in some of the handouts uh, that you have um, on your chairs today, there is a chart showing some of the comparative facts between the Custom House and Verrick, but that is right at the top of the list. Besides the financial incentives, the location, uh, the partnerships, uh, the fellow from the Smithsonian introduced himself today. I mean, the possibilities are endless here for us to come down and really develop our programs, our education and outreach at this facility. So the feasibility study, we reviewed it. Everybody was happy with it. It brought us back to the table to negotiate further. And we decided that at that point, it was time to bring the acting archivists of the United States in for a visit to take a look at the space. That happened in July, last summer, July of 2009. And shortly thereafter, we signed what's called an occupancy agreement with a timetable for design and construction that would look at potentially in August or September of 2011 uh, for occupancy at this facility. So I could go on and on at, at five year history. I've been given three minutes. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, for anybody that's interested uh, at the conclusion of today's meeting, we would be happy to take you on a tour of at least our space on the third floor. The fourth floor is in tremendous disrepair at this point, and uh, that's about the extent of our uh, options for today's session. But again, thank you for your time, and any questions throughout the day, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Dave. Um, now I'll turn it over to Nancy Shader, the Archives Director for the National Archives of New York. Good morning. Um, I'm not a New Yorker, but I'm a Jersey girl, so I'm hoping I get some credit for that. Um, the, there's two motivating factors that's really help, help, helped us make this decision. The first is our space at Barrack Street does not meet our storage standards. What do we mean by that? We mean maintaining consistent temperature and humidity, which without that, it speeds the deterioration of records. Here at the Custom House, we're going to be able to design and build storage area that meets those standards, which extends the life of the records. We're very excited about that. Um, we went around the room, so I've got a feeling most people have visited our facility at Varick Street. If you've been there, you know, to put it kindly, it's not the most customer-friendly space. Um, more and more law enforcement agencies are moving in. We also have an immigration detention center, i.e. a jail at the facility. As a result, the security is getting more and more strict. The line is getting longer. They're now starting to ask for photo identification for people to come in. It's becoming more arduous. And it's not a welcoming experience. And it may dissuade people from coming to visit us. Whereas here at the Custom House, security is provided by the Smithsonian Guards who are comfortable with someone who just shows up without an appointment, who perhaps is not sure they want to come into the building. So the public's first interaction with us at this space will be a positive, welcoming, and encouraging thing. And I think that's something we all forget sometimes, is we're all comfortable coming to an archives, going to a research library. Many people are not. They think they're not qualified. They have to be a professional genealogist. They have to be a historian or a scholar or an attorney. And that's not the case. And the National Archives has the people's records. And we want the people to use those records. And we believe this location is ideal for that, for us to reach an even wider audience of people. Now, some things you might not be aware of is we currently store over 50% of our records offsite. So everything is not at Varick Street. And we've had a large portion of our records offsite. It's going to be five years in September. And we've been able to provide seamless access to those records, even though they're stored offsite. Staff work with customers to identify what they need, when they need it, and we provide access to that material. And we're committed to maintaining that. We have experience with it, and we will work with you to make sure what you need is available when you need it, regardless of where it is stored. So we have a great deal of experience with that. We've created a preliminary list of materials we think will come with us to the Custom House. This preliminary list was created by staff based on staff experience working with you and other customers. As I said, it's preliminary. We're looking for feedback. We're going to make it available to a larger audience. We want to hear from you what you think we should have. Our goal is to have the best combination of resources 
at this location to reach the widest audience possible. So again, it is preliminary, it's in process, and as noted, we're at least 18 months away, so we have time to develop the best possible list. That said, I want to reassure people, nothing is written in stone. The day after we move, if we've determined, ooh, we should have brought this, or we should have brought something else, or we should ship something around, we can bring it back, and we have done that. We have sent things off site, determined they should come back on site, and brought them back on site. So we can be very flexible and adaptable. So even if something's sent off site, if we determine later we want it on site, we can shift the contents based on researcher need and interest. So something else to be aware of. So in summary, we're excited because we believe this is a better move for the records themselves for storage, wider audience, and better for the National Archives overall. Thank you, Nancy. Um, and, and just to clarify, our current off-site storage is in Lenexa, Kansas, right? That's correct. Right. Um, so, and, and, and the uh, additional off-site storage that we're planning uh, to uh, help us make the move to the Custom House is in Northeast Philadelphia, m much shorter distance away. Uh, than uh, Lenexa, Kansas. And now let me ask Dorothy Dorothy, Dor Dorothy Doherty, um, who's the uh, head of uh, public programs and educational programs for the National Archives uh, at New York City to say a couple words. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces. And I know a number of you have been either at a program at the National Archives or um, one of our partners where we've provided a program or, or giving your organization a tour and uh, a session. So uh, it's great to see everyone here. Um, we talk about reaching that wider audience and having a place where we can really reach that audience. Um, that's where programs come in. Um, by expanding our programs, we can also reach that wider audience. But the point of the programs also is to drive people back into doing research. Um, one thing you will see on that handout is that our researcher numbers have gone down. And so what we've done over the years is we've expanded the programs in the space that we have at Varick Street. But any of you that have been to that space at Varick Street know the limitations of that space. Uh, so while we're planning and designing for the space here, we realize we can really reach a much greater audience and drive them back into the research room. Um, because that is our ultimate goal. So here we will have dedicated classroom or learning space, um, and we will continue the same types of programs we currently have, but on a much larger scale. Um, currently we do education programs, we do teacher professional development sessions, we do school, uh, student school field trips, uh, we also do a lot of genealogy sessions. Many of them are on request, but we also have a public series called our Finding Family series that we expect to expand greatly. We also do training. We also do um, outreach to federal agencies and to the general public. And if you've ever participated in any of our larger programs, our special events, you will see again at 201 Varick, the space has limitations. So when we've done larger programs, we've tried to partner with another entity. In the past, we've partnered with New York Public Library and had a briefing on securing our records um, on a national level, but also on the state and local level. Um, over 100 plus people attended that session. We've also done records management training here at uh, One Bowling Green in the auditorium. And that also allowed us to reach a much greater audience. Uh, last year we celebrated our 75th anniversary and we were able to accommodate about 90 people in our small space. Uh, but if we had the opportunity to have it here in this location, we could have probably served a lot more people. Um, so having space here dedicated in a classroom environment, as well as some of the larger shared spaces that other tenants in this building occupy, we can also provide more programming. Uh, we do expect to have a traveling exhibit at least once a year, and we will probably have that in the rotunda space. Again, that shared space with uh, GSA and the other tenants of the building here, but we will also have access to the auditorium. So the possibilities are endless with the space here, uh, but I would just emphasize that our 
ultimate goal is to expand programming and outreach so the people know the National Archives exist. Estelle, you mentioned that this is a, a very important resource, not just for New York, but for the nation. Many people don't know that we exist and all the resources that we do offer. So uh, we do want to spread the word. We will have a much better opportunity to do that down here. And um, certainly, as Dave said uh, afterwards, if you have any specific questions about programs or programs you'd like to see, we're open for suggestions. Okay, thank you.